let's get into this, guys. It's Halloween, so we're wearing our cat costume. I couldn't be the costume I wanted to be, which I was with my wife. Uh, she dressed up as a cute alien, and I dressed up as Jared Fogle. So you could put that <laughs> together. Wife said that's probably not appropriate to answer the door for trick or treating. So we rocked it out with a little cat costume, a little cat shirt, and a nice little hat, goat hat, and no hair. The goat ate my hair. Not my fault. Goats eat anything. Am I right? Anyway, I'm curious about this video here. It's just uh, Pennsylvania Swing State from uh, Andrew Callahan, Channel 5. I'm curious, man. I haven't seen some of Andrew Callahan in a while. I always love his videos. It's a short one. You know, this way, if I get disrupted by trick or treaters, you know, I can deal with that. But also, I got them big old bars of candy. We got 90 bars of candy. Last year, we went through 60 of them. This year, we expect a little bit more. So, good eats. I got th they're 30 for 20 bucks at Costco. Anyway, let's get this going. Wow, I wonder who we're talking about. On Social Security, I'd like to keep oh, I got to turn this up. In this day and time, yeah, we'll probably want to vote for a Democrat, though. Actually, cannot have a single income household. Back then, everybody true. worked in the coal mines or the steel mills, but there was hardly any mines left anymore. The way they that's true, man. This that's because of technology. Nobody's talking about technology. We need to start talking about technology. These different well, coal mines are probably not just technology, but also the fact that we're going towards a greener energy. You know, we're going closer to greener energy, which makes sense. Also, like let's keep that in mind. It does make sense. Um, but there is technology displacing jobs, driving down wages, factories in general. They're getting taken out. Because, and this is one of the things about the Trump tariffs. Like, let's just talk about those tariffs real quick. The fundamental idea is tariffs on imported goods. It'll raise the price of the imported good, which means that you'll have more of an incentive to buy the good that was made here. Okay. Which is going to be an economic stressor for the middle and lower class. But like, let's say it worked and more jobs were brought back to America. Do you really think that that means that more jobs will be brought back to America or more companies will be brought back to America? Because what's stopping these companies from picking them up and going, okay, we're going to invest in a big automated factory that's going to uh, hire one tenth of the workforce that they would used to, uh, used to have what they may have used to have hired. And we're just going to suck all the money up as a rich person who owns the factory and ha ha ha, no big deal. Because like, are there higher paying jobs with technology? Sure, the people have to fix the technology, but like the factory worker lines, those don't really exist. Those are disappearing. So even if the Trump tariffs work by bringing jobs back to America, it doesn't mean that we're going to be, uh, we're going to have more jobs for people. It doesn't mean that people are going to be working those jobs. It might just mean factories are going to be able, like factory owners are going to be able to siphon that, that income through like automation. Thank you for the $10 from Lee. Yo, what's up, Papa? Happy Halloween, brother. Hope you're doing well and having a good day. I am, brother. Happy Halloween to you too. We're trying to get rid of coal, fossil fuels. I mean, I think it's the most important thing in my lifetime. Vote Trump 2024. He probably shouldn't do that. He is the best man for the job. He's not. Even if we set aside the moral argument that he tried to insurrect the government, his policies are not good. He doesn't have good policies. Nothing is, 20% tariffs is not going to be helpful for the lower middle class. Vote for Kamala Harris. Thank you. Yes, honestly, vote for Kamala Harris. Is it Kamala or Kamala? I still don't know, but that's the one you need to vote for. But the good conscience, I can't, you know what I mean? I can't vote. I am about half sick of seeing this shit on YouTube. Every time I turn the damn TV on, it's fucking Kamala getting bashed by Trump. Trump getting bashed by Kamala. I don't give a fuck. Same. That's fair. That's fair. I will say one thing. It, we obviously have higher standards for Kamala, but I, I remember she was in like an interview with somebody and she was getting pushed and a lot of her answers were Trump is bad. And he is bad. I understand that. But for voters that want substance... Give me more about your policy than about how Trump is bad. You know what I mean? Like, I and I know that that's a higher standard for her than Trump, but you know, I don't. Trump is a loser. You know, I would try to engage with a little more uh, decorum. You know, obviously, when you're having the conversation, Trump did bad things, but then like talk about the good things that you're going to do. I would say make that more of a, a focal point for anything else. You know, I wish we would. I wish we would have more conversations because every single time like uh, something comes up, it's like Trump bad. Like explain why different things are happening. Explain to us why there's a border wall issue. I can explain it to you. We don't have a border wall issue as much as we have an asylum seeking process issue, right? A lot of people are coming through, especially after they were backlogged during COVID. People weren't really coming over. It was much more difficult. Things were shut down. So now a lot of them are coming through and they want to seek asylum. That's why there's a burst of people coming in here. What do we do about that? We need to expedite the process for asylum seeking um, to kick people out faster or to bring them in faster. Um, this way they don't get lost in the system going through the courts for two years. Put enough lawyers on there to get it done in a week. This way we can kick them out of the country if they don't have a, a valid asylum-seeking process claim. Let's talk about the asylum-seeking process. I think that as a country, we have the responsibility to to deal with asylum-seeking, especially since we are the world police and we put our hand in everybody's honeypot. So we should have to uh, do something to try to relieve some of the negative aspects that, that bring that about. If you disagree, that's fine. Let's talk about the asylum-seeking process. Let's talk about what should and shouldn't be valid in that process. That'll be a substantial amount of the issue because right now, 
cartels can grab asylum seekers, throw them at the border. Border wall agents go to deal with those people, and the fucking the cartel is going to uh, zip around them. So let's let's deal, let's talk about the real problem. We don't talk about these problems. You know what I mean? We don't talk about like what's the specific issue, what's going on. We don't do that. Let's talk about that. Put a little bit more faith in the American people. I wish somebody would stop would stop saying we're going to cut a bunch of taxes. I, I know this sounds unpopular. I wish somebody would stop saying we're just going to continuously cut taxes because we're in a we're, we're in a spot where we need to where we need to not do that. We need to cut our deficit. We're reasonably healthy as a country economically. Things are a little tough right now. I'm not saying that they aren't, but like our inflation is pretty low. I think it's about two point three percent right now. We need to start our fucking deficit down. We need to get, you know, I don't want the president that's going to come in and give me more money. And actually, I don't need any more money. Right now with my tax bracket, I should be getting taxed more, frankly. And so, like, stop, you know, I understand, like, lower lower middle class people. I, I, I'm upper middle class. I don't need a tax cut. I should probably have to pay more for taxes, right? So, like, I don't know, man. I just, be honest, be honest with us. Be honest with us. Same shit every time. Oh, so and so did this. He did that. I, I doesn't matter as long as somebody's in the office to fix the shit. That's all we fucking need. What's it? That's fair. We're facing World War Three poverty. We're looking to go for another uh, Great Depression. Well, I don't know if we're that far. Actually, we're doing decently. We're not really in another Great Depression. We just had one because of Bush a few years ago. But Good Morning America, you're watching Channel Five. Election season. I think part of it is all the information pumped into people's brains because things are tough. Like I understand there are costs of, of different services and goods are up right now. And uh, you know what I mean? Generally speaking, we're doing better than most other countries, but like it makes sense. But there is a way that you can interact with your problems that either makes them better, worse or stable. And I think that like we have a very negative interaction because social media, these president, people want to win. Trump, Kamala, they want to win. So they're, they're beaming into our brains about how, like, you know, we're, we're all, we're, you know, you're oppressed, you're this, everything's rough. And it is rough. And, but we've gone beyond acknowledgement to almost like uh, propelling a, a, like a victim mentality into us where, like, everything is horrible. It's not that bad. It's a little rough, but it's not that bad. Um, and I wish we could be more proportionate about that because I think people are, there are some people feeling the squeeze and then there's some people feeling like they're feeling the squeeze because of that, right? 2024, we're here in Gallatin, Pennsylvania, AKA the Paris of America's Rust Belt, a once thriving hub of the steel, coal, and railroad industry. Yeah, we're outperforming like everyone else's economy. As you can see though, unfortunately, there's trash for yards, if not meters. Marlboro empty cigarette packages, five hour energies discarded on the ground, decay, blight. Let me tell you, on the cigarettes, that's a big tax. <laughs> that's expensive. Rust Belt. You're not going to find any stump town coffee or voodoo donuts around here. Rust Belt. There's no vegan co ops or zine fairs or flea markets or. I imagine there are flea markets there. Well, oh, no, you know, they're probably like Salvation Army type flea markets, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like a savers. Streetwear meetups or meet and greets with rappers around here. Just hardworking Americans with Chevy Silverados and dreams of the past that meet with the harsh realities of the future. Rust Belt. We have an election in 10 days, so we're here in a swing state to talk to the people and see how they're feeling. Oh shit, there's a guy on a lawnmower. I'm gonna go talk to this guy. Sir! Is he driving around a lawnmower? They're pretty badass. First Pennsylvanian I flagged down for an interview was the town's grass cutter, a man named Larry, who like 68%- Larry! ...of voters in Cambria County. Listen, man, I, I only trust the Jose on my lawn. I'm just gonna be real with you. <laughs> I'm uh, just going to be real with you. Maybe that's just a New York thing. I don't know. They do a good job. And you might think, oh, well, why Jose? I, they've all been named Jose. I'm not even making up a joke right now. I've had three different landscapers. They've all been Jose. This, I guess this is Jose C at this point. I'm on. He's great. Came in. He quoted me at like 40. When he came back, he's like, hey, maybe 45 because I have a big yard. And I'm like, what if I just give you 50? And he did, he's been doing a great job. You know, he comes. He comes when he, he usually comes on time. Sometimes he doesn't. You know, sometimes it's hot. So, but he's great. Thank you for the five dollars from Jeremy Wiesel. Ethan brought on a Ukrainian reference to criticize Hassan. It's a short clip, but I have a link of if you're interested. Not really. I'm not really interested in, in Ethan Klein or Hassan Piker or Israel or Palestine right now. I'm going to be real with you. Cast a ballot for Donald Trump. But I, I appreciate that. In 2020, and plan to do so again. All them coming our into our country. Did they get shots? Did they get vaccinated? Did they do? You know, I mean, it's a fair question. <laughs> They're bringing diseases in our country. He's, this is not necessarily a bad question. I mean, like, I, I, I'm i assuming he's talking about COVID if we ignore the potential racist dog whistle part, which I don't know if he even means. Different people from different countries have different issues with different things. I can't even speak. 
right? Like one illness that might be prevalent in America that we have high immunities for and vaccinated for might not be an issue in in, uh, in Africa. Or so like when we, I think when this was a long time ago, but when like the French or whatever met Pocahontas tribes, <laughs> I'm speaking like an idiot American. Like we ended up giving them like diseases. They couldn't handle what we had because it's just like different places, different diseases. So it is a good question. It's not a bad question. Did you get vaccinated? No. Oh, okay. Well, then you're an idiot. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'm still living. But you f they get vaccinations when they come in. Is that true? Oh, okay. That might be true. I wouldn't doubt that. I feel like they should get them. What's that? You feel like they should get them, though? I just, I, like I said, I just want to see an honest person in there, and I think he is. I'm well, this is not an honest person in any capacity. Just to be clear, it's the least honest person I've ever seen in my entire life. Going for a job right now at McDonald's. He then took a jab at Harris, who has shared she worked at McDonald's during college. But Trump continues to say he doesn't believe it. Trump went to McDonald's, yeah. Yeah, for 15 minutes. Incredible. What they did. Traveling out of country means you get vaccinations. So, I mean, I mean, that does make sense. But I imagine that this, the process coming through the border is probably a little different. But then again, if they're getting legally, legally asylum processed, they're probably getting vaccinations. So that's fair. Either way, he hasn't gotten vaccinations. So it doesn't really matter. It was years ago. We could get, we could get the, the sausage, egg and two, you know, any time of the day. Well, then they changed it. You can only get it for breakfast. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> right. You think Trump might change that? He can do it. I like Trump. The man can talk for two hours straight, and you can understand what he's saying. I don't mean to be rude to this guy. You can only understand what he's saying if you're dumb. I like. I can't listen. Listening to Trump talk on Joe Rogan for three hours that could have been a forty-five minute conversation was brain rot. I don't need a new. You're not my grandfather. I don't need a new story about eighteen different things that happened when you're asked one simple question. Give me an hour long of a concise interview. That's pretty much it. I don't even think that he listens to what Trump is saying. I think that he tunes in on buzzwords like a Democrat bad or something dumb as shit. Um, I don't think that he actually listens to what's being said. There's no substance to what Trump says. Like, this is the thing, okay? Because I am an American. I love this country, okay? I love people. Obviously, people keep asking me, Papa got like, what are you going to vote for? I love this country, dude. I love it. I'm an Eagle Scout. I think this is the greatest country in the entire world. Ever will be. Ever has been. Okay? I don't even know where I'm going with this. I just love America. I don't even know where the fuck I was going with this. I forgot. I went on a tangent myself. We can't have somebody like me in the White House. That's my point. What the hell's going on here? I don't know where the fuck I was going with this. Kamala, you're fired. Get out of here. I don't want that whore in there, Ooh. man. She's a slut. She's what makes her a slut? She's lying. All they do is lie. What has she lied about? When you say Kamala is on some sort of slut behavior, what, what did she actually do? No, well, I don't think she's going to do anything. She's just lying. That's not really a slut, is it? She said about uh, this and that, and uh, this, uh, what is it, the tra transgenders or whatever that. <laughs> As president. What the hell are you talking about? I, I know that they keep pushing this idea that like trans people are getting surgeries coming here. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I, do, I truly want to be very clear. I think trans people are people. They deserve rights and everything. It's kind of the furthest thing from my fucking mind right now. I don't really, I, if they were offering transgender surgeries to uh, people, uh, you know, asylum seekers coming here, I would not give a shit. I do not care about that. I don't care about that. I'm not, that's really not number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or ninth on my list of things to care about. So who gives a fuck about trans people? <laughs> and, I, and again, I love trans people, but it's not issue number one right now. And the only people threatening trans people are, are conservatives. So I don't really care. Like, what's happening? President, she would use executive authority to ensure transgender people who rely on the state for medical care. What? Executive authority. Tran transgenders, or whatever that. As president, she would use executive authority to ensure transgender people who rely on the state for medical care, including those in prison, would have access to comprehensive treatment associated with gender transition, including all necessary surgical care. Oh, who cares? That sounds like a positive thing. If just because you're in jail doesn't mean that you don't have the right to being a human. Jail is supposed to be about reform. We got to deal with that, but that's not really on our list right now. Things to talk about. Why would I care about this? Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to see Trump in there. Larry being my first Why? interview. Trump didn't do anything. His whole presidency. What did he do? He came in. 
Well, he did tax cuts. Well, we didn't really need them. The economy was recovering from, you know, uh, the former Republican president. Obama recovered the party. He cut the annual federal deficit in half. Trump came and gave unnecessary tax cuts when we need to lower our deficit. And he surged our deficit by 50%, right? Up to a trillion dollars a year from $650 billion pre-COVID. So that was nice, but it's unnecessary. We shouldn't have done that. He couldn't do anything about uh, health care, which he promised to do. He didn't do anything about a war the border wall. He actually shot down a border wall bill. What did Trump do? He exacerbated issues in Israel and Palestine by not including Palestinians on the peace conversations with Israel and other Middle Eastern countries. What did Trump do? He had a fucking gay cosplay with that fucking, with a North Korean leader. You know, what, what did he do? I, I don't understand. What did Trump do that people like? Well, he did nothing. <laughs> he really, he was an ineffective president. <laughs> and I always love people that are like, oh, uh, it's a conspiracy. They stole the election from Trump in, in, you know, in 2020. If it's a conspiracy, then how the fuck did he get the president in the first place? Why would he even be able, if it's all conspiracy and there's a deep state and Hillary Clinton's part of the deep state Pizzagate pedophile, uh, you know, cuck ring. And then how the fuck did she lose the election to Trump? Holy fuck, VUE gave me the impression that the whole town of Glitzen was nothing but working class white Americans who'd fallen victim to culture war distractions deployed True. by the media and the politicians they work for. Jesus, so many wrestlers that are dumb as dog shit. They're good wrestlers, but they're dumb as dog shit. But according to many other locals, the town was once a predominantly Democrat union stronghold until Trump came into the picture in 2016. This was all uh, Democratic. We used to have big Democratic rallies here back in this town. We used to have five, six thousand people and coal mines and stuff and it was all it was all labor you know everything's closed everything's gone i mean i have people customers in here that hate me because i don't love trump yeah. <laughs> and i see violence coming down the road i mean people are really brainwashed by this it's crazy hey, based most of them are uneducated and, and really don't care about it you know <laughs> they hear somebody preaching bullshit and they and they fall for it and yeah. just like drug addicts like hey try this stuff make you really feel good Damn, that's actually super based and true. That's probably what a lot of people who want to vote Trump are doing. They're angry at the world, justifiably in some instances, and they hear somebody redirecting their anger. You know who else did that? A failed artist. <laughs> that's why we let every artist into school, by the way. Everybody's like, oh, why do we have all these art degrees and gender studies? Last time we stopped an artist from doing a thing, they did a worse thing. Okay, so... Like, I never went to college, but I'm right. not, you know, that naive to believe in this horse shit. <laughs> Part of the pro-Trump fervor that sees certain parts of the state is a result of direct campaigning. Pennsylvania is one of the seven swing states on the ballot, a term that refers to politically diverse states that have a chance of either voting red or blue. And it's small towns like Glitzen that matter most to the Trump campaign. Virtually all of Pennsylvania... Do they matter? Do those towns matter to Trump or Kamala after after the campaign's over, or how does that work? It's major population centers. Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, State College, Erie, and Harrisburg all lean strongly Democrat, but the rural Wait, did I just see? Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, State College, Erie, and Harrisburg. I saw Shane Gillis, but what the hell is he doing there? All lean strongly I guess he lived Democrat, there. but the rural counties between the cities, particularly in Western PA, compose the largest conservative voting bloc in the state. So oh. Trump has been here heavy, promising to bring back coal mining and steel manufacturing, industries that have been in dramatic decline since the 1950s. I honestly think mining's done. This came as a result of a few factors, such as automation and technological advancement. But the prime Yeah, and we're just not talking about it enough. We're just really not talking about it enough. That's what we really need to be talking about is technology. The primary driver in the economic collapse of the Rust Belt was globalization, wherein corporations betrayed the unions and outsourced labor to countries with lower wages and raw material costs. We are going to put our coal miners back to work. Yeah, I just, it's such a, and this is, again, I wish we'd have honesty. One of those things where you say, like, these, this is just going away. It's so, it's such an unfortunate thing because, you know, we've been really technologically revolutionizing, uh, really, I mean, for a very long time, but it's been going quick lately, really quick lately, like insanely quick. And, um, it's difficult to keep up with it. And you have these factory towns or these coal mining towns or these different towns where, you know, everybody, there's there's one big source of economic infrastructure. And that is the factory. That is the coal mine. And so those jobs produce decent wealth for people. They go and they work those jobs. They bring that money home. They buy groceries with it. They buy cars with it, the television. They do hobbies with it. They do a bunch of stuff. And that pumps money through the economy. And then those jobs, unfortunately, disappear. And, you know, there's one first, second, third generation people doing that same job. You know, dad does it, 
grandpa does it, the son does it. And these jobs are disappearing because that's unfortunately the way things are going. We're getting cleaner um, energy-wise, <clears throat> which we need to be in a reasonable pace. <clears throat> and we're using factories to display certain jobs or excuse me, technology to display certain jobs and people are just losing their jobs and they're unfortunately not coming back. And it's like, what do you do with those people? What do you do with the people that think that like for three generations that they're just going to be, oh, I'm just going to be a coal miner like that. Oh, I'm going to go work in the Ford factory like that. I'm going to go work in the Tyson chicken nugget factory. It sounds silly, but this is real. And then your, your, your factory goes out and then you're on welfare now. And what does welfare do? It's like bare minimum life support. It's not really an economic boom. It keeps that town alive. But it also keeps that town bored. It doesn't encourage money to flow through it. It doesn't encourage you to get a job because it's difficult. You're on welfare. You get a job, you lose welfare. You want to get paid less off welfare. Why the fuck would you get a job? Or you might lose the welfare. Uh, and then if you lost a job, you're, you, you struggle to get back on welfare or you struggle to get welfare uh, that was as much as you had before. There's so many problems. It's like, how do you deal with this issue? And like, you know, honestly, some kind of a negative income tax, some kind of universal basic income tax people, like rich people and technologies more. And, you know, give a break to some of these people who don't make money. Uncond I like a UBI or a negative income tax because it's unconditional. You know, you don't have to be told if you make too much money, you lose your thing. You're just going to have a certain amount of money made. There's something there. So there's something there's, we got we to think of something. We got to start thinking in our brains of what the fuck we're going to do about this. Um. This is something that we like legitimately have to think of. Thank you for the five dollars from Buller. Think about it. We can vote Trump in. Uh, it will be bad, but at least we'll have super size option back at McDonald's to carry us through. And then, uh, <laughs> thank you for all the emojis. I wish I could say those. American flag, eagle scream, praying, a burger, fry. Incredible. Despite Trump's promises, U.S. coal jobs went down 24% during his previous term in 2016. Damn. But that wasn't necessarily all his fault. Every bill he proposed was shot down by a then-Democrat majority Congress, who cited the often dangerous working conditions inside the mines themselves. True, but here's my thing, and I think that this is something to agree with. When Biden was in, was when Bi I know I'm rambling, when Biden was a president, he was able to pass bipartisan legislation. The CHIPS Act, massive economic infrastructure bill, Okay. Why can't Trump do the same? The only, the, the, the biggest bipartisan bill, he pressured Republicans to shut down. And that was border wall legislation that would have put more lawyers at the border to expedite the process of asylum seekers and also more man, manpower on the border wall and more financial infrastructure. And it's like, if your president comes in and they can't, and, they, and for two years, he had like a stack, he had the entire, he had like the, the Congress for two years, the Senate and the House for two years. He couldn't get anything passed. That's a failure as a president. If you can't, if you have a stacked Congress and you still can't pass legislation, you're a failure as a president. You're a failure as a president. So what are you going to do? And more importantly, environmental concerns associated with coal mines. True. Coal releases more carbon emissions and greenhouse yeah, inflation reduction act. Yeah, yeah. gases than any other energy source and is considered to be a major driver of climate change and global warming in the area. Thank you for $2 from Jane Monet. These are my actual neighbors. I moved, I moved, uh, I moved four to trade. Oh, you live around here? That's crazy. Thank you for the 16-month king gut from Jack Stu. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate that. How are we doing? Not too bad, brother. Which I agree. You know, I see I live... Well, so the thing is, these are like carcinogens that get pumped into the air, and these give people cancer over a long period of time, which is why we need to be like, maybe we shouldn't have all this shit pumped into our fucking atmosphere. Here all my life, and I see the winter. We don't have winter anymore here. I mean, we used to, used to be able to... The roads used to be impassable. True. I remember during COVID, I continued to work, and everything was shut down. The weather was beautiful. I know that's anecdotal, but I worked uh, ten summers, ten COVID or excuse me, ten summers, and they were horrific, hot, sweaty, humid as fuck. You got to work outside in that, and you're just sticky the whole time. I remember the summer during COVID when everything was shut down, nobody was going out. It's the most beautiful summer I've ever felt, and I was like, wow. And like maybe they're completely unrelated, but I don't think that they are. And it's like we're really destroying the atmosphere. We got to do something about this. Um, when I was a kid growing up here, it was, the snowstorms were so violent, it was crazy. And now we get nothing. So there's, you know, people don't believe in climate change. Well, we're, what the hell happened to winter? Yeah, they don't uh, believe in cl climate change until they come up with a magical conspiracy that Democrats are destroying certain towns um, with hurricanes so that they could take the lithium that the, country, that, that the government already owns from the towns. It's incredible. In the middle of Pennsylvania. Hot. You feel like a lot of people just don't care about this election? Yeah. 
That's honestly. fair. I think we're screwed either way, and I think the whole country thinks the same thing. Yeah, they might, but Kamala Harris is legitimately. She's actually qualified, just to be clear. On hand, you get a, you got a guy that's a liar and a, a thief wants wants to be a dictator, wants to take care of all his buddies. Bro, I heard Elon Musk say something like, "This will be like the last election if you don't vote for Trump." What a fear mongering piece of dog shit! What a legitimate fucking loser! Like that's insane. You know, because even I'm, I don't want Trump to win, but even if he wins, it's not going to be the end of the country. It's going to be the end of people thinking Trump's a good president. He will be ineffective when he, <laughs> if he gets elected again, he will pass nothing again. So I don't care. Thank you for $2 from Jonathan F. I am sticky. Incredible stuff. And thank you for the 22 month small guy from Hugh Janus. Do the thug shake. Okay. The rich and wealthy and the other party, they just don't give a shit. And where do we stay? Down where they want us. As I hung out at the gas station Maybe. in town, I could sense a general feeling of disillusionment with the upcoming election. Honestly, just lower prices is all I want. Yeah. Honestly, I'm tired of it. After all, both parties had their chance. Four years to change things in Cambria County, Damn. PA, and neither Democrats or Republicans succeeded in raising the median household income to above $55,000 per year, or decreasing the poverty rate below where it currently sits at 16.9%, six points above the national average. I just want shit to be over. What are the main concerns that face your life on a day-to-day -day basis? Spending upwards of three fifty, four dollars a gallon for gas, three hundred dollars for Ooh. fucking ten things from the grocery store. Even when I was trying to find my place here, it's I spent probably a good two, three months looking around. It's just not feasible for anybody. If they wanted to buy a house now, you'd you're screwed. It's hard to live, you know, day by day. It's hard to even get health insurance anymore for the hardworking people. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like small? I wish they'd make health insurance much better because like it's so I was looking into getting it by myself without my wife getting a job and it's like impossible with the way that it's all set up. Health insurance is brutal. All town Pennsylvania is kind of underrepresented. But like I couldn't even I couldn't even go I, I, for whatever reason you just can't go to Aetna and say how much would it cost. They go oh you have to go and work through this third party place to maybe give you a code for maybe Aetna and it's like what the fuck just tell me how much you would charge me and my wife a month like what are you doing? By the media? Yeah I do. Until now. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Day by day. Small town Pennsylvania is kind of underrepresented by the media. Yeah, I do. Until now, what's up, guys? As you know, one of our mission statements here at Channel 5 is to give you guys a raw, unbiased, unfiltered look at reality with a particular emphasis on certain places that aren't covered by the mainstream press. But before we hit the road and chase a new story, we like to use a service called Ground News, which helps us research how both sides of the mainstream press cover a story as it unfolds. Among other things, Ground News is a dope-ass news aggregate that compiles thousands of articles from all across the web and ranks them in terms of slant with their biased distribution tool which allows you to peruse news headlines and scan coverage with a more balanced perspective. Let's use an example with the election. It's a very divisive time. It says right here that in Pennsylvania, 2,500 voter registration forms are already being investigated for possible fraud. As you can see, 47% of the coverage is center, right down the middle, with 23% to the left and 30% to the right. These pretty even margins on the ground news bias distribution table tell me that most likely- Aren't they like lighting of like voting boxes on fire? I saw like some of these like ballot boxes are getting lit on fire. It's fucking insane. This story is rooted in fact and likely is something that we at Channel 5 want to cover in the future. They also have a dope ass tool called Blindspot that allows you to see articles not being covered by the left or the right. And also tracks the corporate ownership <laughs> associated with certain publications that push sensational. I saw one of them was Bezos. Apparently because Bezos said that they, they're pulling like a, like a, uh, what is it? Like a personal piece, the opinion piece on, on presidency that was probably going to be in favor of uh, Kamala Harris. I forget which institution it was. It might have been like the fucking, I don't know. It was some like big newspaper. I forget which one it is. Uh, Washington Post or something? I don't know. Bezos pulled in. Apparently the reason why is because he owns other companies and uh, Trump said that he would like look into him if he, if he, if, if Trump gets the election and then like, I, I don't remember the specifics, but if, uh, if that piece came out, it was a very bizarre thing. I forget the specifics. I probably should have been able to communicate that better. Thank you for the two dollars from Bori Gasso. Can I watch the Destiny verse twenty? No, I can't do Jubilee videos, brother. I use Z King for the five dollars. Uh, do you think Trump is more popular than Kamala? I feel like the combined with lack of votes is a factor as to why the polls are so close. Here's my thing. Uh, I don't really know. I'm really happy that Trump is doing well in the polls because back in 2016, Trump was doing very poorly in the polls, and then he won. And I think part of that, among other reasons was because people said, ah, he's going to lose anyway. I don't have to go vote. 
Well, now you're afraid Trump might win, so get your dumb fucking ass out there and go vote for Kamala Harris. So My story is to serve an agenda. Full disclosure, it does cost money, as it should. It's the best in the business. Let me tell you why. When you subscribe, you'll get access to a personalized dashboard that figures out what your biases are. And what if I told you I could help you get 50% off of their Vantage subscription? Just go to www.ground.news slash channel 5 or scan this QR code right here and you'll get 50% off the Vantage subscription. I'm gonna go ahead and put the link in the description in the pinned comment. Again, that's www.ground.news slash channel five. All right, back to the mean, rugged streets of Glitzen, Pennsylvania. On my way out of town to visit a serpent handling church in the mountains of West Virginia. I what the fuck are they doing? I noticed something interesting, which was the- A, ser a, a serpent handling church? The one and only house in Glitzen, adorned with in-your-face Harris wall signs, both oh. in the yard, on the house, and inside all the windows. So I decided to give the door a knock to see if the occupants would be down to do an interview. So he can wear like a nice suit or whatever and wear a hat, but my wife yells at me when I try to. Okay. There was one man and two women living. I feel like I should be able to go to a wedding with a nice slick bald head in a nice suit with a nice professional hat on that matches the, uh, the actual shirt I'm wearing. Right? in the house. The man did not want to be on camera, but the two women agreed to share their perspectives. The first was okay with having her face shown, but the second woman asked us to blur her out entirely, claiming that her physical safety would be in danger if the town's conservative majority saw her publicly disparaging Donald Trump. Around here. Uh, that's an interesting fear. I don't think I, any, I don't think any Harris supporter would ever have that fear. Or, or excuse me, any Trump supporter would ever have the fear of disparaging Harris. But there are people in public that feel like they might be threatened if they disparage Trump is fucking insane. I'd say everybody wants him thinking he's going to bring it back coal. He's going to bring back um, oil. He's going to bring back all, all this other stuff. Well, if he hasn't done it the first time around, he's using that just to get in office. True. This person is very right and very smart. What are the promises he made about steel? The only steel we're going to use in America is going to be American-made steel. We are also going to keep U.S. steel right here in America. How do you do that? It's going to drastically raise prices for people. How is that going to magically happen? American steel. American steel. American steel. He just says things. <laughs> it's insane. Well, that wasn't true. The, the tariffs uh, uh, is another thing. I, I, get it. I think that's a joke. Um, people don't understand it. All that's going to trickle down to us paying that tax. Yeah. Us, not 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 China or whoever else he says. You know that we're, the, we're not going to be responsible. Well, who else is? We're the one. We're the last people on the totem pole. It's going to go from here to here to here to here to us, and we're going to end up paying it. When you say the bottom of the totem pole, you feel like the working class. Is what you're mm -hmm. talking about? Yeah, I mean that is the bottom of the totem pole. Like that's the that's it's not even the work. Well, the working class, the consumer, right? <laughs> The working class consumer is going to be the biggest person to pay that. Like if you raise goods by 20% coming from China, that means that you're basically going to be paying 20% more for goods in general because the uh, the opposition uh, product is still going to be much more expensive. So even if it's only 10%, it's still going to be more money. Yeah, the working class. Uh -huh. Vote for Kamala Harris. Thank you. What are some of the policies of hers that you like? I live on Social Security. I'd like to keep that. There yeah. are many seniors in our country. Yeah, and Trump, conservatives in general, like, it's so funny because it, it, sometimes I think that we talk about how good the Republican Party was before Trump. They weren't, to be honest with you. They're constantly trying to engage in incredibly unnecessary spending, which is usually increased military spending, despite the fact that we've spent an extraordinary amount of money, and cutting Social Security and other welfare benefits that have kept the country afloat since the Great Depression. In fact, these are things that kept the country from going back into uh, depressions that were as bad. You know, until uh, another conservative president came in and fucked things up, Mr. Bush. Um, <laughs> but that's pretty much it. It's like slash these different uh, welfare systems that have been helping the country a lot and raise uh, money for like, more more money to our military industrial complex, but then don't give any more money to schools. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? It's just they were always and we hate gays. That's pretty much what it's always been, unfortunately. And I don't know that I don't think that all conservatives hate gays. I know that they're gay conservatives, but the reality is, is that if you're if you're voting conservative, you're probably voting to restrict gay people's rights. So it's just kind of the reality. It might not be a big thing in your brain, which is why you don't necessarily care. But you know, anyway, <clears throat> conservatives have never been that good. And they, they, they well, I don't want to say never, but like in my lifetime, they've never been particularly good. It's mostly just like idiot noise. Uh, we want to cut all your welfare spend, shit and make uh, healthcare and education worse for you.
but now it's psychotic. I'm going to insurrect the government and that's okay. You know, rhetoric. That social security is their only form of income. His policy would actually render the social security fund empty, essentially, um, in six years. I don't want any cuts in that. And um, well, it should have never been overturned. I, I myself, that. many years ago, needed a procedure. It's up to the woman. And I like her, her ideas for... Um, sure. I mean, I think that we should have some reasonable restrictions. I personally am like a first trimester guy unless there's a threat to the, the mother or uh, the life of the mother or the fetus or whatever the fuck development phase it's in. You know, that's, that's where I'm at. You know, but like you should be able to have that choice. Thank you for the small gut from Darry, Darren Yee. Appreciate that. Um, helping first time home owners. As the price of housing has gone up, the size of down payments have gone up as well. True. My administration will provide first time home buyers with $25,000 to help with the down payment on a new home. That's something. I don't think it fixes the big problem of like these. Um, of big businesses or, or corporations taking like buying houses, flipping them, and then like selling shoddy housework, but it's something. It's a it's a step in the right direction. I mean, really, the way that I think you'd open up the housing market is you have to get people to be able to live in more places. Right now, obviously, you're going to work around a job, but if we can figure out how to empower smaller local economies and bring more jobs to other areas, which a conversation about a negative income tax or UBI would be the in in place. And it would allow for more houses to be available, for people to buy those houses, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for the 23-month small guy from Callie Ray. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween. I think that's a really good idea because, you know, housing, there's a housing shortage. I like her ideas about the housing shortage because there is a big one. And I liked her idea about is he, oh, okay. saving money for new parents for with you have a new baby. I like those ideas. That's fair. It doesn't matter. As long as somebody's in the office to fix the shit, that's all we fucking need. That's fair. Fuck the authority, Channel 5 News. Channel 55, we don't fuck with Custers. And five is the best number. Okay, <laughs> that was a great video from Andrew as usual. 